First, let me just start by saying uh, I thought you guys were fantastic in this uh, movie. Movie is so good. Um, Thank you. Jay, I have to start with an individual question for you. Um, What was it like not playing the person who was uh, was obsessed with hockey? (laughs) Yeah, crazy. Yeah, or movies, really. Uh, um, Yeah, uh, you know, it was kind of refreshing. It was nice to see how how the rest of the world lives, Um, to, 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 to be in a world where I didn't know hockey or movies were important. Um, yeah. Um, but they also, I have to say, these filmmakers were very, uh, were very, very respectful of me. Um, for anybody who cares, you know, the scene in the diner with Carrie Elways, uh, where, where, you know, Jim's watching hockey. I'm, I'm almost certain the, uh, the Canadians beat the Leafs uh, on TV in that game. So uh, they, they, they purposely picked a clip for me. So, um, so yeah. Glenn, I have to ask you, are you are you a hockey fan in general or no? <laughs> um, I like I mean, I think it's an interesting sport. Uh, I, uh, I think if I probably if I maybe if I lived in Canada, I'd be but I don't know. I look, I'm not. The truth is, I'm not a sports fan in general. Um, I prefer to play them than watch them. I was going to say, I'm just curious of the two of you. Uh, who do you think is winning the cup this year? Or maybe that's a change question. <laughs> that's definitely a j question <laughs> oh frig uh, you know at this point it's kind of anybody like i i i know i think everybody that was favored is fucking out of it already so um see yeah uh, uh, the fucking florida panthers might it's crazy it's yeah i know horrible you know? yeah yeah I, I was rooting uh i'm a bruins fan i was hoping the bruins oh, were gonna buddy. do it yeah buddy. dude it, this this is uh, a hard you know, Literally the the best year of any hockey team ever in the regular season in NHL history to go out in the fucking first. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I basically said as long. Yeah. I can't. um, Anyway, the point is it's, it's, I don't know who's going to win. Glenn, I have to know what it was like for you the day you decided to shave your head to get to do this. And what was it like leaving like your apartment or wherever you were and going to like a supermarket or a Starbucks with that look? And, you know, what was it like for you? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So I was surprised at how I felt after uh, I shaved the top of my head. Um, I didn't realize how much of my, I guess my identity was wrapped up in the fact that I have a full head of hair. Uh, It's like, I didn't, I didn't like my nickname, my nickname in high school was curls. Cause I had like thick, thick, thick curly hair. So like when people would uh, talk about me, like in some of my most formative years, it was, it was often about like how much hair I had. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) so, um, you know, it, it really kind of stripped me of that part of my identity in a really interesting way. Um, and but when I when I would go out uh, on the town as Glenn, uh, I would always wear a hat. And the reason <laughs> is not because I actually got to a point where I actually kind of liked the way it looked. So maybe a strange thing to say, but I truly actually was like, I don't know, it was it was liberating and it was I, I just kind of liked it. I kind of liked it. But I was a little worried about going out in public uh, uh, being bald, not because I cared if people saw me and were like, oh, that's a bald guy. Like, I didn't care about that because I, I thought it looked kind of good. What I, what I did care about was if people recognized me and thought, <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that guy wears a wig. You know, I didn't want people to think that, like, I usually wear a wig. Like, that, that bugged me. Uh, that actually meant- that actually makes <laughs> <laughs> that makes complete sense. Yeah, but I also I also get it. Also, people could think that this is a bit for it's always sunnier or something. Well, that's true. That's true. But but you know but you know how the internet works. I'd be like, I saw Glenn Howerton. He did you know that he's really bald? And then we I'd be doing this interview with you right now, and people would be like, God, that wig. That's, that's, a, good, that's hell a great wig. piece. Yeah, it's a pretty good piece. piece. Yeah. Right. Uh, l- listen, you never know how a movie is going to y- you make a movie in a void and you never know how people are going to react to it. So what has it been like for the two of you? Because this isn't like some Marvel movie with crazy money to have such positive reviews playing at South by playing at Berlin. 
I mean, like, what is it like for both of you to be part of something that clearly is resonating? The best. It's spectacular. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, Jay's, Jay's had the good fortune of being involved in really great television projects and and film projects. Uh, and I, I've been a, a part of a few films here and there, but really haven't had much of a career in the world of film. So um, to finally get such a juicy, juicy role in something and then actually people are watching it and enjoying it is as an actor who's always been a huge film buff and somebody who loves watching films and, and, and just obsessed with films. Um, it's incredibly, incredibly gratifying uh, the response to the film and the, the fact that people are really talking about it and seeing it. Um, it's uh, it's really exciting. Yeah, it's it's really special. You know, like I, I for, for me, I really just want to leave it knowing that we did something cool, you know, and 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 I knew that we made something special. I was convinced of that. Like in the first week, I was like, oh, the the, the process and us jamming like. The, the, these are we're making good songs man no no b-sides like this is this is the best um but you know i uh, i have no idea what people like I, I i you know and if and if like the past sort of half decade has taught me anything it's that like i don't understand the world or people or their interests or their tastes or anything you know and especially in an era where there's basically you know uh, a movie about like four people stuck in a house um, or Harry Potter and James Bond and Star Wars and nothing in between. I just like, you never know what people's appetites are like. And if, you know, so this is all to say that it's the best. It's nice to see that people dig it as much as we do. You know, that that's the, that's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. The thing I was wondering, and I was going to ask Matt this, but he's not here is that, this is one of those uh, like crazy stories that at any point where you like how like, you know, uh, having like a big studio or someone come in and, and tell the story before you guys could almost tell it, if that makes any sense. Like, were you? It, it, oh, it, were we worried that we were onto something so cool and it was a matter of time before someone else told the story? Yeah. Is that kind of? Yeah. Uh, um, They might have been. I was like, because it all because most of this story happened in fucking kitchener waterloo i didn't assume that it, that anybody was on our trail. i thought we had some i thought we had some time i thought we had some time yeah well, I, you know what it is what what a what a fucking total diss too like that somebody had didn't beat us to it in a way yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. what i mean it's like, it's like a weird canadian diss like <laughs> You know, I because I feel like I feel like if 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 this was an American company, that probably sure. would have would have happened, and that's kind of messed up. Yeah, that's not that's not wrong actually. There be there would be competing BlackBerry projects if it was down here. <laughs> well, you, you, they're, they're, what Hollywood is good at is hearing that someone is making something and then thinking, oh, that's a good idea. We should also do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think people have kind of. I, I think it also speaks to the sort of um collective selective memory or selective amnesia that the modern world has about this device and this corporation i think you know um iphone kind of makes you forget that there was anything before it you know and so i think that's also part of part of why uh this is like a kind of great untold story but it's so many so many blackberry obsessives are coming out of the woodworks and and are so excited about this movie because they were so obsessed with their blackberry device yeah i mean in the movie you talk about it being a crackberry and i remember people calling it a crackberry i i remember the obsessive you know um and listen i'm sure you've been asked this a thousand times and i apologize but did either of you have one um and did you enjoy it wouldn't it be fucking crazy if you're like, whoa, you know what's crazy? Nobody ever asked that. Nobody's uh, ever um, asked us that. No, uh, yeah, I had one. I had uh, almost every iteration from whenever I started, circa 04, 05, 06, I guess, until about two years ago. I literally got rid of one two years ago. Um, so I was, uh, I went, I went down with the ship uh, in in a large way. I, I I adore that machine. I miss it. I never, I never had one. I I could never uh, wrap my head around uh, how to get my thumbs to work on those little teeny tiny buttons. I, I just and you like, didn't want I people to get a hold of you. 
I also want to, my, my, yeah, I also, for the most part, just always want to be left alone. So like that, the, the Black, Blackberry was kind of my worst nightmare. Uh, this is a sidebar question, but both of you have done uh, cool work uh, in a number of things. If someone is actually, if someone has actually never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you want them watching and why? Oh, damn. <laughs> Bro, that's a heavy question. I've literally never. That's actually like that's a heavy one. No one's ever asked. There's oh wow. Uh, I'm, there's there's a, there's there's a few things that I'm I'm very very proud of, uh, but few that I'm more proud of than this film. Um, and if people watched this, uh, this and this was their introduction to me as an actor, I'd be stoked. Um, yeah, I, I I would feel the same way if if, if like. You know, um, but I guess, uh, yeah, also, I'd have to say uh, the, the two goon movies, I think, uh, you know, I'm I'm not in them a ton, but, you know, I co-wrote them and directed the second one. And they are like as close to my worldview as has ever been put on screen. So I think that would be the kind of that that'd be a good uh, uh, entry point. I'd just be interested that somebody was psyched to like, that somebody was like Googling me and being like, who's it? What else did he do? You know, like gone. If someone went down to like Frederick March rabbit hole, but for me, I would be very, very, I, I, I went down a Frederick March Wikipedia rabbit hole recently. So anyway, yeah. So that's it. Go, go. <laughs> you know what? Fuck, fuck me. Go, go look at some old Frederick March movies. It's also shocking that the thing you're recommending has to do with hockey. What's that? Nothing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I know. Crazy, crazy. Right. So you guys obviously did a lot of research when you were getting ready for these roles. What was like some of the things that you learned about Blackberry or your characters that really surprised you? I guess. Um, good question. I, 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 the thing that surprised me was not a thing about uh, Mike Lazaridis specifically so much as the great kind of uh, uh, research in motion um, adventure and misadventure, which was, I didn't know about the American kind of government, like stock exchange commission. Like, I didn't know that those guys came up to Canada with warrants and stuff. And I, and I didn't know that, um, about the like Verizon cell tower hijacking stuff, <laughs> like all of that really crazy fog of war shit. I didn't know any of it. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know any of the story at all. So it was all a bit of a surprise to me, but you know, within the context of that it, yeah the some of the like, the hacking of the Verizon towers thing like jay said that that was <laughs> crazy. That, that seems insane that <laughs> seems insane to me crazy. also also just like when it's being pitched to mike hey we can hack these towers uh <laughs> and the way it's pitched is like oh yeah we we hacked into you know sony <laughs> PlayStation sister, like yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't they, they, like these that these guys just like hack into these systems to like get what they want. It just seems uh, insane to me. Like I mean, some of the things that these guys did, you know, the fact that the fact that uh, uh, that you know Jim was told you can't sell any more phones because it's gonna it's gonna completely like <laughs> destroy the network. And he was like, oh really? And then watch just goes me. immediately, <laughs> watch me. And then just goes immediately to his uh, sales team and is like, I need you to sell a million black, black hairs. <laughs> like, you're just like, that's, that's fucking nuts. And then, and then just to come out and then just to basically, you know, blindside his tech team with like, you got to, this is happening. So you got to deal with it. You got to figure this out. Like, just figure it out. Uh, I'm almost out of time, but uh, what's a scene in the film that you got on the first take or a scene that you thought would be easy that ended up being a real pain in the ass? Um, well, we didn't, there are no first takes because Matt Johnson, um, you know, has, he suffers the, the disease of perfectionism. Like he, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a bit of a mini Kubrick in that respect. Like if it were up to him, we'd still be shooting in that fucking warehouse. Like, like yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, and uh, <laughs> it all reads relatively easy because it's all just guys standing and talking, um, <laughs> but, but it's fucked. And the, and the way that they shoot is crazy, right? Like the cameras are always, you know, on the other side of the room. We never knew where they were. They were, and they're shooting on these big fuck off like National Geographic lenses. And, and so we just didn't know, like, so there is a sort of, there is a chaos 
that we weren't privy to. The, the, the math, the code wasn't told to us. We were just like kind of acting and just, and but with no, we never ever knew how close we were <laughs> to getting a scene. Like we, like I, I, we kept asking each other, Glenn and I would often like, do you, it feels like we've got this, <laughs> like the fuck is happening? And so we were just kind of like out on the ocean and Matt was the only one who knew where we were going. Yeah, I mean, it was it was uh, it, it was a really interesting process. Like usually you've got a bunch of lights and cameras like right in your face, um, you know, and you get used to that uh, and it's not a problem. But with this, the cameras were always so far. Like like Jay said, we did we, half the time, most of the time, most of the time we did not know where the cameras were. So every take felt like a rehearsal. And there was something kind of liberating about yeah. that, you know, um, and, and fun about that. But uh yeah, I don't know. It was it was a it was a very interesting it was very interesting process. Um, you know, I, I I remember having a tough time with that that scene where I had to go in and tell the sales guy to sell a million blackberries. I don't know why, but some, for some reason that that scene was giving us problems. But I mean, it's not doesn't really oh. make for a good story because I don't I don't even remember. I just remember it was the only time on set where I felt like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, and Matt and Matt was like, "No, this you're not getting this." <laughs> It was yeah. like that didn't really happen all that often. And, you know, Matt, she, Matt is, he's a really great, he's a really great way of, of, of being very blunt and honest about things, but without being, uh, without being rude, you know, without being like mean or cruel, but if you weren't getting it, he was going to tell you and he, and you were going to be there until we got it. Yeah, that's absolutely spot on. Yeah. The, the scene when I, when he, when him and I are practicing my first talk to, to Jim on the phone of like how we're going to make negotiate, you know, um, like Matt and I got into a full on argument that had the, like, we, he like cleared the set for half an hour so that he and I could hash this out. Um, and so like, because but all and through nobody's fault there was no bad guy in that situation it was just like um it is the best thing to work with somebody that has you know a really kind of clear voice and and who just wants to create and wants it to be as good as it can be there's a difference between that and somebody who is just shooting because they don't know what it is they're looking for and they hope the entire kind of cast and crew will just like show it to them and they keep waiting for that moment without knowing what that moment looks like. And, and MJ is not that. Um, MJ is specific and definitive. Um, but yeah, if, if you're not there, if you're not in the movie that he sees in his heart, um, you're gonna be there until you do, you know? Um, and like, you know, li li literally the, the movie that came out at Berlin is slightly different than the movie that played at South by is slightly different than the movie that's gonna come out this week. <laughs> like he, he has edited, he cut until they literally physically told him he can't anymore. Like he cut after both festivals. He kept going back to it. Like there's like all he does is make movies. That's all he wants to be doing. And that's the best thing in the world. However, sometimes on like hour 12 of a day as an actor and you've got a wig or a fucking shaved head and it's 40 degrees Celsius in a derelict like steel facility in Hamilton. You're like, buddy, like <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Uh, I have to stop with you guys, but I'm so curious of what he changed from South by to Berlin to what I saw, or is it just like a tiny little thing? There, it's I, experientially. Tinkering. I don't know that even Glenn or I would ever notice it, right? No, little, it's, like it, lots of tinkering, just little little things. Not no no big no big sweeping changes. The the cut that's going to come out is the average person would never be able to watch them back to back, you know, the Berlin cut and the, the, the theatrical cut and be able to tell the difference. Yeah. There's no story changes. It's, sure, yeah. It is all, yeah. It's just vibe. It's no, no, vibe. I, I totally get it. It's like cutting a little bit of like a, a little breath from a scene or whatever. Correct. It's like a slight tweak. Uh, listen Correct. guys, I just want to thank you for your time. And seriously, you both did so great in this. And thank um, I really hope it's a huge hit. Uh, good luck Thanks. with the rest of your speed dating. Thank you. Thanks so much.